Hey guys, One Piece Nation here today, and today, for the next like 20, 25, 30 minutes, because this one may be a bit longer than the other one, because Nami has been around since like chapter 3, we're going to be talking about the navigator of the Straw Hat Pirate, Cat Burglar Nami. So let's just start off with some basic information, her name is of course Nami. She made her debut in chapter 8 of the manga, but this is worth thinking interesting. In the anime, she was introduced in chapter... Yeah, anime chapter. In the anime, she was introduced in episode 1 of the mo of the anime. She was introduced in episode 1 in a cameo appearance when she was stealing from the from a pirate from a restaurant that was boarded by Alveda and her crew. And actually, when Luffy's boat crashes into the water, him and Nami, their eyes, meet briefly. Now, I am honestly not sure why this was done. I guess it was to set up Nami's character, even though, like, it didn't need to be set up, because it worked fine the way it happened in the manga. I'm honestly not sure why it happened. I've always found that to be a very strange, odd, somewhat disturbing thing. Like, it's just, it's just it's weird. No, I'm not really sure what that was about, about but yeah. But, uh, so that's the thing. Um. She was 18 when the series started, making her like a making her one year older than her cat in Straw Hat Luffy. She is 20 after the time gift. Her birthday is July 3rd, and does and I do not know the measurements of Nami tits. If you want to know her booby information, look it up. But I will say, let's just get this over with. Nami had nice big boobies on her chest. They're really nice to look at. They're nice, big, and round, and Nami really hot. Way too over sexualized, though. But I have a whole video on that shit. So, yeah, go watch that video. But, um, yeah. So, Nami was introduced in the very beginning. When Luffy was in Orange Town, I believe. It was Orange Town, right? Yeah. Which is ironic, because Nami, Orange Hair. Oh, my! I just realized that. Or in town, Nami, oh, Nami like me, Kang, which can translate to tangerines or oranges or Like, how did I just notice that? Alright, so Nami's introduced way back. Um, she actually, she doesn't join Luffy in the arc she's introduced. She's actually with a few crew members to do this. She forms an alliance with Luffy and agrees to be his navigator if she gets all his treasure. Which, of course, we find out that. Luffy does not give a shit about treasure. So that worked out for him. So yeah, yeah, joined her in the Lawrence, the Orange Town arc. She was a member of the Arlon Pirates at the time, and we found out that her, when, her, she, when she was young, her mother was killed by Ar Arlon because they couldn't afford to pay the debt. And what pretty much happened, to summarize it quickly, was that Arlon saw her ability to draw maps and enslaved her as a member of the Arlong Pirate, but agreed to free her village if she made up like a hundred million berries, which is an incredible amount of money. But she actually finally did it, but then Arlong stole all the money. He hired Marines to steal it, and we're pretty much like, you need to start again. And after she met Luffy, she befriended him, and when she eventually stole the going berry during the Barate arc, Luffy and the crew followed after, and Luffy refused to leave. Eventually, after they learned about her past and everything, after she find out her money had been stolen, the villagers uh, finally tell her they would known the whole time. They know everything that's happened to Nami. They know about all of it. They, they know that every single thing she's done for them. And, she deci and they decide they're going to fight her along, and they're going to die. She has breaks down. We're probably one of my favorite things in the series. And she, has, she, she has like a mental breakdown on screen. She breaks down. Like, this rival Sasuke Uchiha learning the truth about Itachi. Which I won't spoil, but there is a secret with Itachi. If you're kind of the Naruto. But Nick rival Tim learning about the truth about Itachi. Like on like the like level of like, not act good, but it's almost up there. Like she has a full blown mental breakdown. She starts stabbing her arm with her uh, tattoo of the Jolly Roger of the Arlon Pirate did, and just screaming Arlon's name. You can see in her eyes, she, she hates this guy. Like, there is no one in the world she hates more than Arlon. And 
to be the thing. He killed her mother. He's gonna kill everyone she loved. She, 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 she pretty much made her his slave. But we later find out that Arlo remembers some virus, and it's kind of ironic that Arlo made a human girl his slave, considering how much he hates humans for making fish man slaves, but, and, but that's besides the point. But no, but he's, he's stabbing his arm. She is. Luffy grabs her arm, tells her to stop. He looked, he looked at Luffy and asked him to help. Incredibly powerful thing. He takes his hat off, just puts it on her head, which he only really does with Nami. I, I'm not, I will talk about the possibility of a pairing between the two later, but Nami is the only person Luffy consistently gives his act to throughout the series. He hasn't done it in a long ass time, but he did used to do it quite frequently. I'm not sure if Oda was touring around with a pairing between the two. Every once in a while there are some things with Luffy and Nami. Then you scratch your head like, it's Oda hinting at something? And he says there was not going to be any romance in this series. But you're looking at the scene and you definitely see something. But no, but so Nami, um, just thank Luffy. Luffy and the crew go, he can kick Arlong on that. And his pirate's acid. Luffy gets up from the, the rubble of Arlong Park and proclaims, Nami, you will always be my friend. It's utter, it's a thing like that. Like, in some versions and some dubs, he said, you will always be my friend. Like, there are things that Luffy does when concerning Nami. It kind of makes you crack your head like, oh my god, okay, this is the direction we're heading in. And that's what Nami is. But yeah, so... Nami doesn't really do much in the terms of fighting in general. Like when Thirsty started off, all she had was a bow staff. And so, uh, but before that, quickly, just to finish up the Arlon Park part, she, uh, she goes, runs onto the Going Mary when they're about to leave, and she stay, uh, pulled up her shirt. It's a great theme because everybody on the island is like, is she stripping? She, oh, she's a pirate scum already, and all that. But he had to pull the bracelet like halfway, and and all the wallets of all the villagers fall out of it, and they're all like, "Wait, our money!" And it's a really good scene to remind them that Nami is still because she grew up. Be Bellamere was very poor. That was the reason her mother Bellamere couldn't pay our long debt, and she grew up and she really, she, she really liked the money. Like it's not even the act of being able to spend it; it's just Having money makes Nami happy. So she has to so get her hands on the steal all her money, and then we go to the, the uh, Alabast arc, which is where she finally gets probably, which is probably the most important arc in the whole series for Nami, next to the Arlon Park arc, because during that arc she goes up to Usopp and she's like, "Listen, yo, Usopp, I'm weak. I'm weak as shit. You got, you got what I'm saying, yo. I need you to make me some shit." Some, some cool shit. And, and, and it adds garbage party crap. I'm party trick crap. I need like a magic stick that can like electrocute people or something. My dog. I'm sorry. <laughs> that was really bad. No, but she's like, Usopp, I need a weapon. And Usopp understands her like desire to get a weapon. So he makes her a weapon, which is the climate attack. Now the climate attack turns out to be useless and shit, pretty much. It has a couple, a lot of party trick features, and Usopp obviously was not thinking when he made it. But, he did give it a few abilities that to someone, anyone but Nami or another navigator would be almost completely useless. And this is what I like about the climate attack. Like, you, you could give Nami, you could give anybody a sword, or, a, or like a laser gun, and they could use it. Nami is probably the only character that has a weapon, not including Delaford users, that has a weapon that, like, no one else in this theory could use, at least that we know. There are obviously probably other people that know enough about the weather to use it, but, um, she's the only one skilled enough to use this weapon. The Climate Attack is an incredibly, is a weapon that is incredibly difficult to use, because it requires mastery of understanding of the weather. Like, so Nami needs to, like, heat up the air to 30 degrees and then cool it down. And you'll be electric ball. And the whole thing is incredibly complicated. But it's a scientific weapon. And this is where we get 
to be interesting part of Nami's character. Which is because she doesn't really like to fight. Like, Nami is by no means a fighter. She does fight when she has to, like, in all, in all that stuff. When Vivi needed help, Nami stepped up. But only situation Nami really fights in is either when she's about to die, or when a friend is in need. Like all the Straw Hats, Nami puts friendship and her friends above her own life. If a friend needs me, I'm Nami is there. If a friend needs Nami, she is there. She's always there. Just like all the other Straw Hats. So when Vivi's in danger, she's like uh, she has to do my favorite Nami thing. She uh Miss Doublefinger ran at her with her spiked head and Nami just ran la uh, left her run her spiked head through her foot. And she and she just stands there. I know, this is probably the most badass Nami of the whole series. And she's like, My my pain is nothing in there to Vivi's and she didn't use it to, the tornado tempo. I don't know if I've also noticed, but tempo, tempo. <laughs> so uh, this, is, this, is a, this is a comparison I meant. Oda really likes to make a really disgusting sexual joke. It's like a mint double finger name. Mint double finger. Are you kidding me, Oda? Like all of Nami's opponents are in, are like sexual innuendo. Kali, I'm pretty sure Kali, but some is like a lens. There's definitely some lesbian crap going on with Kalifa. Not that there's anything wrong with that, but it's still kind of weird. <laughs> it's still kind of weird the way it portrayed in the theory, but no, but so she ran her fist through uh her well her like head. It's a weird it's a weird thing to say. She ran her head through Nami's foot. And she needed the tornado tempo. And it's a the great moment. Then there's her fight uh she has a fight on Skypea, but it's so uh but I don't even remember the guy's name. Like, Skypea for me, I have to need to rewatch it. And then I forget. I, I don't remember a lot about it. But her Skypea fight, I pretty much forgot about. It was very forgettable. I do remember this thing where it looked like the orgasms while fighting the enemy. I do remember that part. Because that was a. I was. I was probably. I saw that scene a second time when I was older. And I started rolling over laughing. I, mean, I, had, I didn't get it what I thought when I was like 10. I was like 12 when I saw it, but I wasn't very aware of sexual stuff until I was like 15, 16. That was when I was started becoming more aware of this. Probably when I was like 15 was when I became fully aware of all like orgasms, things like that. And you know, it was a great thing when I, I, that thing was weird to tell. But um, yeah, but uh, no, then she had her fight with Khalifa and. She hasn't really had a real fight since then. She take she helped in a couple of battles. She had her mini fights that her Usopp had with Baby Five, and she also helped in the. She actually, I believe, she felt the finishing blow to the Pacifista in the Shibodi arc. I believe. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, I'm pretty sure Nami felt the finishing blow to the Pacifista. I'm pretty. It was either her or Usopp, which is uh, uh, after the monster trio did their combination attack, and when they all like done a shit ton of damage with that stuff. You know, I'm pretty sure two of the one who dealt a finishing blow to that. But uh, again, Nami has not really fought a lot since the dying gift. Um, she did have a brief fight with Bruce earlier in the whole King Island arc, and she may be getting one with all this. Maybe I'll do like a bonus part of this. I don't know. Probably not. But she will. But she will probably be fighting Bruce later in uh, the arc. I feel like Bruce probably gonna get free from her captivity, and we're going to get Nami versus Bruce. But I could be wrong. I mean, it looks like Bruce out of commission, but she could probably escape, and that's will probably escape because otherwise uh, it'd be too easy to the strive to escape to the ship. And it's, this is just a whole ton of shitty plot that could really go really badly. This, this entire plan for the wedding is shit. It really is. They're all gonna die because of this plan. No, but, um, so Nami is just chill. No, Nami doesn't really fight. She has the role of navigator, which is very important to navigating in the new world. But honestly, I'll be honest, Nami is one of the straw hats where there isn't a lot to talk about with. I did do a, a video, a theory video on Nami's father being the navigator of the Roger Pirate, which I will link somewhere on screen, probably, probably like right here, maybe, I don't know, 
But I did do a video on that, where I pretty much, to summarize, I'm not going to give you all the evidence, I obviously want you to watch the video, but pretty much said, not these skills abnormal. Vivi even said at one point in the theory, Nani's skill in navigation is not normal. Like, it, it's not. So, my, I came to the conclusion that Nani must be related to the navigator who, did, who took Roger again to the Grand Line. Because there's honestly something special about her. But a lot of people would say she has some sort of advanced observation hockey. I guess that's a possibility. I, I, I guess. I'm not sure. But the, the time for that, she's also a really good thief. Hence her title, Cat Burglar Nami. If you need something to be, is that the Toronto ever need to steal anything? Yeah, uh, I wonder what this was. I couldn't tell if they were part of his chair or a sweater. And he has a sweater. My, my cocky sweater, actually. No, but, um, yeah, so. I don't think, I don't think that this to be a lot longer, but I don't have a lot to say on Nami. She, she isn't a character with a tremendous amount of arcs. I mean,. I like her as a character. She actually has a temper. Like, yeah, I guess I'm gonna talk about her relationship with the member of the crew. She has a temper, and she actually... Yeah, I guess I can talk about this. She very much so takes on a captain-like role with the crew, because she does things like she keeps the logbook. She deceives the ones that, 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 that divides up the money when they all go shopping. She gives them all, like, an allowance. It's things like that. She very much does a lot of the jobs the captain should have, because Luffy will never do those things. Like, Luffy, honestly, Luffy, if he could, would just take all the money and just go buy a shit ton of meat. So, Nami also keeps everybody in line, like, make sure things get, like, laundry get done on the ship, because she's the very abrasive and has a temper, and just, she has the personality to command people. Like, she definitely has to get her commanding personality. Like, Robin is just as responsible as Nami. Robin just doesn't really give a shit. Like, Robin kind of like, yeah. Oh, this, like, Robin sees Luffy running around and, like, leaving his clothes over the ship and he's too late to pick him up. And she's like, oh, Luffy's funny. <laughs> like, Robin just doesn't care. But Nami's like, Luffy, pick up your clothes. Chopper, stop pooping on the grass. You're in the bathroom. Put up, chop. Like, that's Nami. That really is not a job. That's her biggest role. Um, and that's about it for Nami. I wish there was more to talk about. But honestly, I can't think of anything else to say about her. Because she isn't... She, out of all the strides, I would say Nami, if you go on like Uro Jackson, has the least amount of theories. And when you do see a theory, it's only a repeat of that stupid Monet Devil Fruit theory. People are adamant that Nami, what is Nami going to eat one of her tangerines one day? And it's going to turn out that one of those tangerines was, reincar was, was the reincarnated version of Monet Delafruit from when Monet died. And all I have to say is, I don't see that happening, but I feel like if Nami were going to get that, that probably would have happened on the way to Whole Cake Island, uh, because they were out of food. Yo, know, and I think, why did they eat Nami Tangerine? Like, I, I think, I didn't realize it. Like, they're all killing over starving. Why not eat Nami Tangerine fucking rain, you dumbasses? But yeah, I'm gonna go now. I actually have school work to do, and I have to edit a couple videos. So, yeah. Um, next week, I'll probably be doing sake. Uh, yeah, I think it, I think it, no. I think it's time, it's either time to do, like, sake or another One Piece character. Tell me in the comments, you want me to do Sake or another One Piece character next week? Hope you guys enjoyed. Above all else, guys, have a great day. This is One Piece Nation, signing out.